11 of last season, including playoffs, Payton has nearly as many interceptions as touchdowns. And also during that span, he ranks outside the top 20 among 32 QBs in yards per attempt, touchdown interception ratio, and Skip's favorite total QBR. We asked you earlier on the show to go on Twitter and vote. Is this the beginning of the end for Payton? And the results are in. It's close. Wow. But 57% say yes. 42.9 say no. Hmm. Mark Schlereth is here, former Bronco. We need your answer to this question. Okay. Is this the beginning of the end of Peyton? I should hope so. It's 18 years in the league, right? I mean, at some point, it's got to be over. I, listen, it's not... I ended up coaching over there during the course of, of spring trainers, during the course of, obviously, of, uh, of training camp. Yeah. And so Gary Kubiak asked me just to come and be an extra set of eyes, and so I spent a lot of time over there. And and this is not hyperbole. Peyton's arm is not what it once was, but it was never great coming in. It was not a supremely exactly. he was never no. supremely gifted. Uh, I saw him throw the ball better this training camp than I've ever seen him throw the ball in the last three years I've been hanging out there. That doesn't mean that you know he ha had some miracle elixir and he's fine now. He still has his issues. He still has to throw with anticipation. He's got to be an anticipatory thrower. He's got to have all those things. The real issue here with the Denver Broncos is you're basically amalgamating two separate offenses together. What Peyton Manning has done his entire career, the entirety of his career has been from the line of scrimmage, out of shotgun, essentially orchestrating what play we're going to get into and throwing the ball and then trying to get into Gary Kubiak's zone run system off of play action. And what you saw was the, I guess, what you saw was an offense that really basically acquiesced to what Peyton wanted to do. I think out of the 70 some odd plays, over 40, almost 50 of them were out of shotgun. Uh, on a play action offense where you run the football, you ran no play action. They threw 40 times and ran 25 times, just yeah. for the record. And, and by the way, you want to see what this offense is supposed to look like. Now, this is going to have to be a pride-swallowing siege from Peyton Manning. And basically, he's going to have to trust in this offense. Otherwise, this is going to be an abject disaster. And it's still going to take several weeks. But what you saw in the fourth quarter, the opening drive, 10 minutes and 56 seconds, I think the first six or seven plays were out of uh, were from under center. He threw it, a nine-yard completion. Then it was run, 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 under center. Set up the play action you're going to have to do that as an offense and you're going to have to be okay with that and eventually this thing will open up but right now there's a butting of the heads and I'm sure behind closed doors there's a few choice words being thrown around between quarterback and offensive coaching staff but that's part of that's part of actually healthy football yeah. relations inside a, inside a, a you know inside a facility to get those things ironed out and figured out okay Stephen a brought this up as we opened the show your very point and, and we went back and forth about it but are you saying that Peyton is under orders not to check out of as many runs under Kubiak that'll be that'll be part of it yeah th there'll be here's the thing about offensive football okay let me just give you some from my perspective, mm -hmm. from playing the offensive line. Here's some things about the offensive line. When you run things, when you run an offense from the line of scrimmage, like Peyton Manning has run his entire career, and you can basically check into the best possible one-on-one -on -one matchup at all times, because he is the best that's ever played, bar none, not close, at controlling things from the line of scrimmage and getting you into the right play. But just because you can do that does not mean that that's the best thing for your offense over the entirety of four quarters and over the entirety of a football season. Sometimes you have to relish and understand the beauty of a nasty two-yard run where snot bubbles are flying and guys are on the ground and legs are getting cut. You've got to understand what that does to a defense. And that's really hard for a guy like Peyton Manning to say, wait a minute, I'm giving up a two-yard run, and I got one-on-one -on -one with DT on the outside that I could throw it to. Sure. And you have to be able to come to grips with that because it's the best thing for the entire offense. For me as an offensive lineman, I, I understand getting into, getting into um, a no-huddle situation where the quarterback occasionally is calling plays from the line of scrimmage. Okay, I get that. But over the course of four quarters, it makes me play on my heels. Man, I want to come up on first on first sound and say, I don't care if it's an eight-man box. We're going to dictate to you guys on the defensive side. You walk up there and you say, 
and you just go and you come off the ball and you play some smash mouth and you try to you try to pummel people and shorten people's necks and then the play action stuff and the deep crossing routes and the tight end stuff that they have in that offense will open up. But they play they played that entire game the first three quarters from shotgun and it eliminates 50, 60 percent of your run plays out of shotgun. Uh, it just is not. It, uh, to me, you're, this you're is Gary Kubiak. Kubiak this is Gary yeah. Kubiak basically saying to your quarterback, you know, we're going to acquiesce a little bit here. We're going to, you yeah. know, we're going to pamper you along a little bit. And listen, you want to compile stats or you want to win a championship? That's yeah. what you have to ask yourself. Because Stephen that's a. where they are. They have a, they have yeah. a championship yeah. defense Stephen in Denver. A. Get in here. So I guess I'm trying to ask you, Mark Schlereth, are you saying that Kubiak is more right? than Peyton Manning in terms of the desired approach to what this team should be doing moving forward? Absolutely, 100%. 100%. Okay, I, I, I can't refute that, but I think this is the beginning of the end for Peyton Manning as I articulated to Skip to begin the show uh, because of a bevy of things. The numerous injuries he's incurred, obviously age and attrition combined with something new. Now, I don't think that Peyton Manning, uh, uh, you know, I don't think he is miserable as, as some people are trying to portray it as being. I know the last four games of the regular season, he didn't seem to look like himself. C.J. Anderson spent a large chunk of that time carrying the football more than any running back has done in the Peyton Manning era. And his performance in the playoffs against Indianapolis obviously was an issue, particularly in, within involving his injured hamstring. But then when you come into this season and you put forth those pedestrian numbers, is, which is definitely pedestrian for Peyton Manning, I think you have to wonder, you know, how much, you know, how much does he want to do this or how much longer does he want to do this? Peyton Manning is used to being Peyton Manning. And it's a very, very valid point when you talk about do you want to win championships or do you want to stockpile numbers? He completed 66% of his passes. Uh, he threw for over 4,700 yards. But I think the absence, the omission rather, or the departures of Wes Welker along with Julius Thomas has a lot to do with the direction that Denver is going in. I think they also are aware of the fact that Peyton Manning might be, not be too keen in order to do this, so they must believe that Oswald or somebody else is ultimately better or ready or, or not better than Peyton Manning, but ready to step in and do the job the way that they want to do it. So it remains to be seen. I just believe that the handwriting's on the wall that this probably is going to be Peyton Manning's last season. But obviously, I don't know that for sure because he's still a top five quarterback in the NFL. Okay, so are we saying here that, that you're going to bet on Gary <clears throat> Kubiak over Peyton Manning because I'm still on Peyton's side here. I, I'm going to bet on his track record versus Gary Kubiak's track record. And I get where you're coming from, but Peyton has been so successful for so long. And you said that some of the arm strength had returned during, at least during the, the summer. I, I think he's still very good enough for them to go a long ways this year doing it Peyton's way. Now, again, maybe right. his weapons aren't what, what he used to have. That's a whole other issue. And, and I do like their stable of backs. I would like to see a little bit more balance. But in the end, I, I would put the car keys in Peyton's hands before I would put them solely in Kubiak's hands. Right. And, and you know what would happen to you? You roll into the divisional playoffs and get waxed by a better football team that's more physical, like, oh, like what okay. always but, happens but to not, Peyton Manning that's except not one time always in his career. His fault that's not always his fault no but right? it's the it's the fault of the way you operate that defense when you can't or that offense when you can't dictate in the running game when you can't basically line up in third down two and say we're going to smash it down your throat and you're not, there's okay. nothing you can do about it that's that's what needs to change you know what you'll compile 11 and 5 and 12 and 4 record put the keys in his hand but there's a lot no of question. people would take that man sure that's but, pretty good okay well in denver like i played I there i live I, there mm -hmm. it's it's not about being 12 and 4 it's about winning a world championship okay but as peyton said yesterday do i have to remind everyone that we did win the football game Champ on sunday listen, championship defense and you talk about some of the departures on the offensive side of the ball Defensively, this team is legit, and I mean as good okay. as there is in this league. And then the other thing they've done, bolster the depth on that whole team from a special team okay. standpoint. This this team can flat out win two two, uh, with those two thirds okay. uh, phases they, of the did, game. Did they not beat a very good football team, a physical yes. football team, yep. at home on a team that has beaten them in the playoffs? And I think there? they gave up 173 total yards or something of that nature. Guys. Great conversation. Mark, right. your perspective was excellent. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. My pleasure. It. Always good to be with you, fellas. But we do and have to go too. to break. Ollie. Thank you. Thank yes. you. We're not done talking about Peyton, though. He does have a game this Sunday, and it's in Kansas City. Arrowhead, a tough place Thursday. to play. Oh, Thursday excuse me. Night. Thursday. Yes. Thursday. Thursday. 
We're going to get into that after the break, Mark. Thank you so much. You got it. Put your hands in the air if you're with me. Hold down the fort and make 